Want to make sure you guys are 100% ready for when Shadowkeep goes live and don't want to be farming for mats when it does? Well, today we're going to go over all the things you need to be doing in order to be prepared for when Shadowkeep launches. As of uh, this is Lazerbolt and welcome to our ultimate preparation guide for Destiny's 2 Shadowkeep. Today we're going to be covering everything that you need to be doing in order to be prepared for Shadowkeep. We're going to go over the basics, we're going to be going over the more hardcore stuff, and we're also going to be going over on farming methods to make your life a lot easier. Now before we dive in and talk about all that information, I do want to remind you about our giveaway. We're giving away two free copies of Shadowkeep for the system of your choice. To enter it's super easy, all you got to do is click the link down below where it says Join Bull Nation and you guys will be automatically entered. Alright, so now it's time for us to talk about this ultimate guide. So first things first guys, I want to get rid of the basic stuff just for the simple fact that there are going to be new people coming into the world of Destiny who have never played the game. We're also going to get some people who are returning players. I want to cover all the basic stuff first, then we're going to get into the little bit more hardcore stuff, and then we'll get into the farming method of how you'll be able to farm every single item. So the first thing I want to talk about is the things that are going to be important for you to be farming for Shadowkeep. First thing we want to make sure we're farming are mod components, enhancement cores, planetary materials, legendary shards, glimmer, and bright dust. These are the six most important things that I believe you need to have in order to be prepared for Shadowkeep. So one of the first basic things that you want to do is make sure your vault is clear. The reason why you want to make sure your vault is clear because everything that we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting a lot of items and we want to make sure we have enough space in our vault. So basically everything that you do not want to keep go ahead and dismantle it. I'm even going to suggest if you have weapons that you do not use that are exotics Dismantle those as well because you can always get them out of your collection so you do not need to have them in your vault You can always just get them off your collections They're not that expensive to get out anyways Now the only thing I would kind of take a look at and see if maybe I want to keep is look at your gear And see if any of the gear pieces that you have for your current character If any of these dropped with enhanced perks If they did I would suggest to keep those even though they're not armor 2.0 It's always good to keep them just because you don't know if you're going to be needing them at the early stages While you make the transition into armor 2.0 everything else just go ahead and dismantle you should technically already be getting materials like for example legendary shards you should probably be getting glimmer and some gunsmith materials so it's already a win-win for you guys the next basic thing you want to do is make sure you go to your shader inventory now i already did a lot of cleanup on my shaders but what you want to do is get rid of all the shaders that you do not like only keep the ones that you think you might be using in addition to that you want to make sure you guys are looking for shaders that have icons on them the reason why you want to be looking for these is because you might have some that give you some legendary shards and give you bright dust so this is a really good way to start building up on those legendary shards and start building up on the bright dust so once again dismantle shaders that you don't like look for the ones with the icons and these should give you some legendary shards and some bright dust as well all right so for the last basic thing that we're going to be talking about is we want to make sure we're keeping bounties now bounties are going to be very important and you probably want to be doing this the week before shadow keep launches so basically what you want to do is make sure you stack up all the bounties don't turn them in just stack them up and make sure you keep them in your inventory just so you can have them ready to be turned in when shadow keep launches now as the point of me making this video iron banner is also out i would suggest to actually play some iron banner keep all your iron banner tokens and all your iron banner bounties just so you can have them ready to turn in when the iron banner comes out for shadow keep this is going to help you out a lot because it's going to give you a leg up over everybody else. Plus, remember, the new Iron Banner armor is going to be dropping armor 2.0. So you'll have that armor at your disposal as soon as it goes live. Also, one thing that I want to remind you guys, remember, we're getting two pinnacle weapons. One's going to be a gambit weapon and one's going to be a crucible weapon. We don't know if these weapons are going to require for us to turn in bounties. So you're definitely going to want to probably stack up on some gambit bounties and also some crucible bounties. All right, so now to get into the more hardcore stuff. And some of this stuff you might already know if you've been playing Destiny for a while. But I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be mentioning a couple of things here that are going to be new for you guys that you might have forgotten or might not remember or probably didn't even know that that's the way you did it. So make sure you guys play close attention. Now, I wouldn't be a good YouTuber if I didn't mention these two things. So we're going to mention them just because they're relative and also they are pretty commonly known. So the first thing, of course, is going to the gunsmith and picking up his three bounties that give you enhancement cores. Now, the cool thing about this is you're able to do this on each character. So technically speaking, you'll do three bounties on one character three bounties on another character, three bounties on another character. That's going to give you nine enhancement cores daily. So this is a really good way to start stacking up these enhancement cores. If you start right now, 
by the time Shadow Keep rolls out, you should have like at least 300 enhancement cores just by doing this daily. So the next one we're going to be talking about, of course, is going to be planetary materials. There is no other better way to get planetary materials than going to talk to Spider. That's going to be common knowledge to the majority of you guys. But for those of you newcomers, Spider is going to be the person that's going to be selling planetary materials. Now, the key to Spider, of course, is knowing what to buy and when to buy. Basically, the theory is anytime he sells planetary materials that give you five planetary materials for one legendary shard, that is the time to buy. Any other time, don't buy from him because he rips you off. So make sure you guys keep in mind. Anytime there is planetary materials that just cost one legendary shard, that is the time I should be purchasing. Now, there is one really important commodity here that you want to make sure you guys stack up the most on, and that is simulation seeds. Simulation seeds are so important because they're going to help us get more legendary shards, more enhancement cores, more glimmer, and we're going to talk a little bit about that further in the video. So make sure whenever he's selling simulation seeds for legendary shards to stack up on them as much as you can all right so now let's talk about farming methods so one of the first things i want to talk about since we're already on the simulation seeds let's talk about why these simulation seeds are so important well if you guys recall mercury is still relevant in the world of destiny and they still have a vendor called brother vance but for some reason a lot of us forgot about brother vance but now he's becoming relevant again because He's going to be helping us get a couple things. He's going to be helping us get mod components. He's going to be helping us get legendary shards. He's going to be helping us get enhancement cores and, of course, gunsmith material. So a lot of good stuff that's going to be coming from this particular farm. Basically, what we're going to do is get as much simulation seats as we possibly can. Go talk to Brother Vance, and we're going to be turning these in to level him up. Now, every time we level him up, we're going to be getting weapons, gears, shaders, sparrows. So all the stuff that we get is going to be very fruitful for us because once we dismantle this, we are going to be getting different sets of materials. The key materials we're looking for here are legendary shards, enhancement cores, and of course, bright dust. The reason why these materials are so important is because the more legendary shards we're able to collect, the more simulation seats we're going to be able to buy and the more we're going to be able to do this process. Now, the way you know if you're going to be getting an enhancement core or not is if you get a weapon that's masterworked or an armor that's masterworked, then an enhancement core will always drop from that. Now, it's pure RNG on how often you get the masterworked items, but technically, if you waste a thousand of materials, you should probably get between two to three enhancement cores. There's been a time I got lucky and I got five, but that was pure luck, so it's all going to be dependent on your RNG. Now, also remember, guys, when you're doing this, please make sure you guys are dismantling your shaders and the ships you're getting because these are also going to be getting you legendary shards. Make sure you guys don't forget. All right, so now to talk about the method of how to farm mod components. So in order for you to farm mod components, and this is why I told you guys to clear your vault. You're going to want to make sure you go to your inventory and remove all the weapons from your inventory. Primary, that's heavy, uh, that's special. You want to make sure you remove all the weapons. Just leave one weapon in there. And what you're going to do is go to your collections. Now, in your collections, you're going to look for a blue weapon that says Adventure. These are the ones we're going to be targeting. Now, you want to make sure you purchase all these. Now, they're going to cost a little bit of glimmer and they're also going to be costing a little bit of components. But we're still going to be able to get these back. We're not going to get all of them back, but we'll get some of it back where we won't feel that we actually wasted anything. So what we'll do is buy as many as we can of this. Once you go ahead and purchase all the ones that fit in your inventory, go back to your inventory and start dismantling. Now, all of these have a possibility of dropping mod components. Once again, this is pure RNG, but there is no relative cost to this. It's actually pretty easy to do. And you don't lose that many items. You actually gain more stuff, not in material wise, but you gain more by getting those mod components, which are going to be a key factor when it comes to Shadow Keep. There's a really effective way to actually farm these mod components, which costs very little bit amount of glimmer. And it's definitely worth doing this every single week or every two days. All right, so now it's time to talk about how to farm Bright Dust. Now, in order for farm Bright Dust, we're actually going to be looking for a specific bounty. We're going to go to Eververse. And we're going to be looking for the bounty that she has where it tells us to kill 10 Hive. Now, this is going to be the easiest bounty you're going to be able to do. And the cool thing about this bounty is once this bounty is completed, you're able to come and pick up another bounty. What you want to check for your inventory is that you have Eververse notes. I personally have 114. So every time I buy the bounty, I'm going to be spending three Eververse notes, but I'm going to be getting 70 Bright Dust. Now, the cool thing about this bounty is that it's the easiest one to get completed. Unfortunately, it's not live during this reset, 
But what you can do is check when it's alive for the reset and it makes sure you guys have enough Eververse notes. Once you guys pick up the bounty, all you got to do is go to the Crown of Sorrows raid, start up the raid, and you're going to see that there are two knights that are right in front of when you start the raid. All you have to do is kill those two knights, come back to orbit, and then rinse and repeat until you killed a total of 10. Then once you're done, go ahead and pick up the bounty once again, and you'll be able to stack up those 70 bright dust every single time you complete the bounty. The key to this is just having enough Eververse notes to make sure you're able to do this as often as you can. Me personally, and I'm pretty sure the majority of you guys also burned a lot of Bright Dust on those nice looking glows for your Solstice armor. So we might be really short on Bright Dust and of course we're going to want to make sure we have enough Bright Dust to purchase all the new items that are going to be available in Shadow Keep. Now it's time to talk about how to farm Glimmer. So in order for you to farm Glimmer, it's not going to be in a way of you getting Glimmer every single time. This only for you to have enough Glimmer when Shadow Keep comes live. Now remember, Shadow Keep is going to be increasing how much Glimmer we have to 250,000 as opposed to what we have capped at now. So one thing I've noticed when playing Destiny for such a long time is one thing that you don't prepare for and you always end up running out for when a brand new expansion comes out is Glimmer. And you hate to be doing a raid or be doing an activity that you want to infuse an item and you need Glimmer. And it's like, oh man, I can't do that, right? So you want to make sure you have something to be able to compensate that Glimmer that you're going to be spending right off the bat. So what I would suggest is to do the following. Go to your collections and you are going to look for an exotic ship that will cost 7,500 Glimmer. Now we are not buying this in order to dismantle it right now, but we're buying this to just keep in our inventory for when Shadow Keep comes live. So what we'll do is make sure we buy as many as we possibly can, stack them up in our inventory, because when Shadow Keep comes live, we're gonna be dismantling this to get Glimmer back. Basically what it does, it's gonna cost you 7,500 Glimmer. You're not using any Glimmer right now because you shouldn't be infusing anything. So every time you max out your Glimmer, buy ships. Every time you max out your Glimmer, buy ships. And these ships, once you dismantle them, will give you 5,000 Glimmer back. Plus, they'll also give you back all the legendary shards you spent. This is a very good effective to stack up on Glimmer and have it ready for when Shadow Keep goes live. Another extremely important thing that's going to be part of Shadow Keep is going to be XP because the more XP you're able to gain, the faster you'll be able to level your artifact, the faster you'll be able to level up your character. So this is going to be a very important step and today we're going to be talking about having the right ghost. Now for those of you who've been playing Destiny for a long time, I'm pretty sure some of you guys will probably have any of these ghosts. There are a couple ghosts that come with this perk. And the perk is called Guiding Light. Basically, Guiding Light, what it does, it gives you all XP gain is increased by 10%. I personally have the Cosmo Shell, and the Cosmo Shell is actually a really good one. If you have that one, that is the one you're going to want to use. Due to the simple fact that it has two really good perks, it not only has Guiding Light, which is the one that you really want to get, but it also has Omni Telemetry. And what Omni Telemetry does is just generate Gunsmith Telemetry data on any elemental weapon kill. So anytime you guys get a weapon kill, you're going to be filling up the bar to get a telemetry now the telemetry what it does it helps you increase the level for your gunsmith this is going to be very important because when shadow keep launches leveling up the gunsmith is going to be a very good way to actually get more mods and more mod components so it's something that you want to make sure you're farming you're farming those telemetries and keeping them over Plus, in addition to that, the ghost is going to be helpful for you because it's going to help you earn XP to level up your artifact and level up your character. I went ahead and put the list of all the ghosts that have the guided light. You might want to check your inventory. You want to check your collections to see if you have any of these. Now, one quick note for those of you who might not have any of these, make sure you check every week on Eververse. Eververse will sometimes bring one of these ghosts back that you're able to purchase. And you guys could just nab one off from her. So you guys can have the Guiding Light Ghost before Shadow Keep goes live. And there you guys have it. That is the ultimate guide on what you need to work on and what you need to prepare for when Shadow Keep goes live. Remember, I will be covering Shadow Keep extensively. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't saw already. I do hope you guys did find this video helpful and informative. If you did, do me the huge favor, guys. Drop a like on this video and especially share it with your friends because that does help out the channel quite a lot. In addition to that, if you want to go the extra mile and show some love and support, do consider joining the Bold Nation to join. It is super easy. All you have to do is click the link down below where it says Join Bold Nation and you guys will unlock exclusive features only found on the channel like amazing emotes that you're able to use all throughout YouTube. Plus, since Destiny is coming pretty soon, we will be doing raid carries for those who are part of the Bold Nation. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget WGATAP and I will catch you guys on the next video.